Welcome back to DVC Weekly. This is episode 42. My name is Jason Rippleding. I'm the broker of Buy and Sell DVC. I'm here with Scott Ferrioli. Owner of DVC-Rental.com and BuyAndSellDVC.com. Today is November 24th, which means you're probably not watching this episode because you're preparing your home for Thanksgiving or you're preparing to travel for Thanksgiving. And... Uh, we hope that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and have fun with your friends and family. It's beautiful. <laughs> so 11 months from today is going to be October 24th and seven months uh, from today is going to be June 24th. Let me ask you, speaking of Thanksgiving, have you ever been on property on Thanksgiving Day? N no, I have not been on property on Thanksgiving Day. Okay. I, I, I had to think about that one, but nope. Because I'm, I'm, yeah, I wasn't sure. Are the parks usually, they're pretty busy, right? Yeah, yeah, they're, 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 yeah, yeah they're, they're pretty busy. <laughs> so um, remember, all your social media, you have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. Uh, tell your friends, tell everybody you know, uh, be sure to hit like, be sure to hit subscribe, um, share it with your friends. We hope we you're still enjoying the information that we are providing. And we're going to start out with Scott. He's going to talk about the rental side of DVC. Let's see what he brings us today. I, I wanted to mention this week that we are about to hit our busy season coming up. Right now, it's typically quiet. Um, in January, or sometimes even starting the day after Christmas, it normally gets absolutely insane for us on the rental side. I, I know resales gets busier as well that time of the year. But for the DVC members, I want to mention, get your points in as quickly as you can, you know, because again, we typically, business could like double starting January over what we do in December. So it gets really busy. We're always in need of points. Um, but what happens is that everybody gets together with their families around Christmas time and they start planning Disney vacations. Because between Thanksgiving and, and Christmas, everybody's planning for the holidays. Nobody's really thinking about, you know, Disney. They're all, you know, worried about, traveling and entertaining and all the all the busyness that goes and getting gifts and everything. So as soon as Christmas is over, everybody's minds immediately switch and they're like, when, what are we gonna do for Disney next year? And we typically blow up. So if, you, if, you, if you're a DVC member, get your points in early. If you're a renter, you know, if you think that, you know, you don't have to wait till Christmas day to figure out your Disney plans, get them in now because we know it's gonna get absolutely crazy. Um, just as a reminder, we can book 11 months in advance. So, you know, when January when January hits, which again, when we start getting the absolute busiest, we're already looking at December. That's 11 months out. We're at December already. And some of that stuff is going to start selling out. Like we were mentioning the other day, um, you know, first week of December is absolutely insane. Uh, you know, I should say the parks aren't that busy, but everybody wants to go that time on DVC points. So they, they rent out 11 months in advance. So, you know, if you're thinking of going anytime, you know, December, November, you know, start planning now because, you know, before you realize it, it's going to be sold out already and it, it's going to get really, really busy. So the earlier you reach out to us, if it's more than 11 months in advance as, as a renter, that's fine. We can add you to the queue so that as soon as the 11 month window hits, you know, we can start booking a reservation for you. If you're a DVC member, again, we're going to need those points. Bring them in now so that way you're, you're right up there and we can start booking these rooms for people because, again, we know that right now it's a little bit slow and up to Christmas it's a little bit slower as well. It's coming though, you know. You, after doing this for so long, we know what's going to happen. It's going to get busy. And I mean, I don't know if you want to mention anything about similar time for, for resales as well, but I mean, I, I, you, it's going to be busy. So, I mean, so another thing that's going to happen is, uh, you know, you're going to get your due statement soon. And then if you're an owner that says, well, you know, the last two years or whatever, I mean, again, take, take COVID out of the situation, you know, that's when not only does it get busy on that side, but this is when people, they get the due statement. That's when they re reevaluate their DVC ownership. They say, you know what? You know, we've had a good run with it. We used it for the last eight years, but now, you know, we want to, you know, we want to, we want to go skiing in Colorado for the next five years because, you know, Ellen wants, that's what she wants to do. That's their 12 year old daughter. They want to go skiing. That's what they want to do. Or blaming poor Ellen. <laughs> oh man, poor Ellen, the 12 year old just got blamed for them selling their DVC contract. This poor girl. The or guilt of this poor girl for the rest of her life. We sold our contract because you wanted to go to Vail. 
or they want they live in Texas now they want to buy a boat and go fish on the lake in the summer. That doesn't you know, sound bad. You know, things <laughs> change. I mean, the, you know, like, you know, I just had an owner that wants to sell because he, you know, he wants to buy a fifth wheel and they're going to travel around. So, I mean, I'm well aware that there's all sorts of vacation options out there. Yes, there are people that buy DVC. They keep it forever. They keep adding on points. They only go to DVC. That's all they do. But then you have those people that they, they do it for extended period of time, whether that may be, and then they, they sell and they move on to another option that's out there. Because um, And so if you're looking to sell, just keep in mind that if also you you put a reservation up for rent and then they secure the renter, you can put your property on the market and it can close after the checkout date of your, if you have any pending reservations. Of course, if you don't have any pending reservations and it's going to close in the normal eight weeks. And if you end up, if you pay monthly for your dues and you make January or February's payment uh, before it closes and the buyer's getting all the points for 2022, then you're going to get reimbursed those two months. If you are one of those members that pays in one lump sum, um, then you would get reimbursed that entire lump sum at closing as well. So, uh, you know, the, yeah, it is It is really, it is the busiest time because like I say, that's, you know, people don't, they don't, they, that's when they decide as when they get the due statement, that's when they re reevaluate what they're going to do with their, you know, DVC ownership for the next year. Yeah, I mean, everybody's always preoccupied for the holidays and they're getting ready. I think that all, all of a sudden it's that same thing as, oh, wait, this, you know, it's over. Now what do we do? Whether it's planning a Disney trip or, ooh, you know, dues are coming. We should probably sell this. It, it all kind of hits at the same exact time. And it's normally a, a, a big run from January through March or April, something like that. I know it's typically our busiest season for both sides. And then, of course, that's going to be when a lot of new people are going to be exposed to yeah. DVC as well. I mean, you like Thanksgiving week right now, there's going to be all sorts of people that are exposed to DVC. Then you go into Christmas week, New Year's is the same thing. It's like, what is this DVC? What is this? You know, yeah. so it, 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 it just comes <laughs> it comes full circle because you have the family with Ellen that's now going to go skiing. I'm sorry, Ellen. And then you have another family with Texas. Brittany oh. that that just discovered DVC and now they're going to vacation for the next eight years. You know, it's just, it's, it all comes full circle. Welcome so. aboard, Brittany. <laughs> oh. It's nice having so you. So whether you're on the end of selling or whether you're on the end of buying, I mean, it, you know, we'll be happy to help either way. So, um, that, we, went, that went off the rails a little bit. That was great. I love that. So now we're up to, uh, your food review. Come here. I'm going to eat you. Get in my belly! Are, you, are we so, back at Animal oh, yeah. Kingdom? No, nope. no, we are not back at Animal Kingdom. Are we at a Disney? <laughs> Where are we at? We're at the local pizza shop. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are at Planet Hollywood at Disney Springs. I think this is, I don't want to call it a hidden gem because it's one of those things that just, it's not super crowded. I mean, it's, it's a big restaurant. Obviously a lot of people know Planet Hollywood. So, you know, you're not surprising anybody. But it's one of those restaurants that I barely ever hear spoken about, like in the Disney communities and online. Especially and, nowadays. Yeah. I mean, I have, my family loves Planet Hollywood. I mean, it, it's it's big, open air, like big dome. And they, have you ever been to Planet Hollywood? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, they, they're projecting videos in there and they got sing alongs. And it's, it's a lot of fun. It's it, great, great for kids. I mean, it, it's, this is not like a quiet atmosphere type place. This is a more jumping place. If you've got, if you've got a young kid that's, possibly crying or kids or younger or younger kids. like when I, when I had my kids my, my, when they were little little I never wanted to take them anywhere nice because I was worried they're going to cry in the restaurant you know you don't want to bring babies there ruin people's experience when they're paying $80 a meal so this is a more loud atmosphere that you go you know if your kids are making noise or whatever it's it's not going to bother anybody and Jason really likes this well I just see people at home well Scott said we can go here if our kids are our kids are cranky and crying <laughs> bring them to Planet Hollywood <laughs> But I, I, I That's really new slogan yeah. in Hollywood. Do you have terrible kids? <laughs> Bring them to us. <laughs> but I, I think it's I think it's it's a great option. What's also really nice is it's on open table as well. So a lot of times you can get reservations not on the Disney reservation system, but on open table. There's only a there's only a handful or two handfuls of Disney restaurants that are on the open table app. So really nice option. The uh what I'm gonna mention here is that I like the it's a penny it's a penny 
chicken and broccoli. And I have written on here brocoki. This one makes me laugh. And I still call broccoli sometimes brocoki in the house because for several months, their menu, they misspelled broccoli and it said brocoki on there. So I always joke around there, we have chicken and brocoki. It's $19.99, which, which is very reasonably priced for a Disney dinner. Sliced all natural chicken breast, broccoli florets tossed with roasted garlic pesto cream sauce and penne. Really, really good. Um, I always find that possibly can use a little extra sauce, so I just get a little extra sauce on the side. But really, really nice option. Um, I give this a 7.8. There's an option that I'm, I'm teasing again because next week I'm going to do an option at the same restaurant that I think is just a little bit better. This one's probably a little bit better for you. But I mean, this is, again, 7.8, super, super solid. I know that next week I'm going to be going to Planet Hollywood as well because I have to bring my son to Disney Springs for a birthday party. And the last couple times I've had the next week's meal, I'm going to go back to it this time just because this one's a little better for me and it's still not great for me. It's gotten... Wait, the good. birthday party's at? The birthday party is going to be at AMC Theaters and then afterwards they're going to uh, Splitsville for bowling. Oh, okay. so it's, a, it's my, my son's friend. Uh, again, movies, bowling... I mean, great options for, you know, for Disney. And if, if you're a kid, you live locally. I mean, it's, it's a great birthday party. So they'll be doing that. And again, I'm good. my wife and we're taking our youngest son because it's no point to drive there, drive home to pick them back up in a little bit. So we're going to, after his sports, we're going to drive there, probably have dinner with my little guy at, at Planet Hollywood and then wait for my son to be ready. So looking forward to that. And I'm planning on having my, my chicken and brocoki meal. Nice. Again, 7.8. Nice. So Lead now, us in, Jason. So now we're on to the resale side. Finishing strong. Finishing strong. And it, I and basically, this is one of the things that I see discussed on the different uh, discussion boards. And it's, when should I wire my final funds to the closing company? Now, majority of the time, a buyer, when a buyer is able to complete the documents and wire the funds, they're just going to complete it and wire it, and they're going to be done with it. But the file, of course, cannot close until the seller has done their part. So sometimes a buyer can wire the funds, do everything, let's say, on a Monday. And the following Wednesday, the seller's documents still haven't been returned, so the buyer gets frustrated. Well, if a buyer is, not, if a buyer is paying cash, they don't have to get anything notarized. A seller is always going to have to get their documents notarized. Now, and sellers, of course, are from all over the country, all over the world, and everybody's unique in, in uh, how they can get documents notarized. Like some sellers, you know, they can live in a place with a bunch of notaries, but because of their schedule with their spouse, you know, they can't, they can't go here, they can't go there. They have to do it on a Saturday, and it's got to be you know, between this hours and then they go to do it that Saturday and then one of their children's sick and they can't go. So, I mean, things get delayed. So, yes, some buyers will send an email to the closing company and say, listen, email me when you have everything from the seller and that's when I'll wire my funds. There's no issue doing that. If you want to wait until the seller has completed their documents because you don't want to be, you don't, you don't want there to be a five-day lag between the time you wire the funds and the seller return the documents, then send an email to the closing company, CC me on the email and say, listen, email me when you get the final documents. The closing company would be happy to do so. They'll send you an email and then you can wire the funds if you want. So you don't have to worry about there being a lag of when the seller's documents are uh, coming in. Maybe the subject is uh, not the most exciting, <laughs> but- Let's I, talk about that. that was a strong ending. It was exciting. But I, it, I, I was it's riveting. a question out there because so I, I mean, again, there's no issue waiting until the uh, seller's funds documents are in before, because it's not, it's not like a house closing where the sellers. I don't even know if house closings are like this right now, but you know, like when I closed on my house, you go into a room, maybe the seller's already signed, and then you sign. It's it's not like that. Yeah. Scott's a seller; he's got to get his stuff done. He's in, you know, uh, he's in New Mexico. I'm over here in uh, New Jersey. So it's, and then everything's going to Florida. So there's no issue. If you want to wait for the documents to arrive from the seller to wire the final funds, by no means, that's, that's not an issue. 
Excellent. It's exciting stuff. It's very man. exciting. It's very yes. exciting. I think I think Britney just cancels her contract. See, Britney is gonna love DVC. <laughs> She's gonna fall in love with the boardwalk. Her mom's she gonna is. be like, but I really want to stay at the beach club. And then Karen. the dad is gonna say, Well, let's go to Bay Lake Tower because we can walk there. I mean, this is the kind of thing that's gonna happen. They're gonna get exposed to DVC and they're gonna wanna go to all these different resorts and they're gonna use it for the next eight years. They're gonna create all this memories. And then they they might move on to another vacation option, but that's just that's part of the DVC uh, beauty of it. it you know, it, it circle may, of life. It is. It may work for you forever. It may work for you for you know two to five years. It may work for you for five to ten years. It's there's so many options with DVC, and that's why you should become a DVC owner, or you should be a DVC renter. And, you know, maybe you only, you know, you don't, you just, you just want to, you want to rent and you don't want to pay the price that Disney's charging and you want free parking because with that free parking money, you're going to find Scott at the resort and then you're going to get snacks, a food buy review snacks. and you're going to buy the same thing that he's bought and you're going to rate it yourself and you're going to start your own YouTube channel and you're going to compete with Scott on the food reviews. This really is a circle It's turned bad. Oh man. On that note. Uh, we appreciate you watching. Always hit that like, hit that subscribe button. And I do want to say one thing that we haven't said in a long time. What's that? Is if you want to share information to our audience, mm. please record a video or send us an email on how to record the video because we would love to share. You know, you say, hey, I've been a member for eight years. You know, we like to stay at this resort. This is what we like to do. We would love uh, more of the testimonial videos to share with the audience. Yep, absolutely. So be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. Be sure, if you don't eat turkey on Thanksgiving, I'm gonna let you know that is okay. That is okay by me. Not that you need to be okay by me, but uh, but if you're eating turkey, enjoy your turkey tomorrow and uh, come back next Wednesday and uh, see us again. I just wanna say, Ellen, I'm sorry, and your parents still love you. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you.